Alrighty, it's the next day, and uh, where do we leave off? Okay, so we left off Beverly and these edges, right there. Um, so now I guess what we need to do is start dyeing it. And I have these, I don't know if you can see them over here. I have these leather dye pens, and what we're going to do is just, I'm not sure what I want to do for the actual serpent part, yep. Or the outsides, but I know I'm going to do the whole background. I'm going to do the background in the serpent black, but for this background right here, I'm going to do either this brown or um, this brown. I'm not sure yet, though. So, I guess we could just start doing that. And I love these dye pens, especially for small, small things. Just like a pen. And it helps out so much. And just like that, I'll be back when I've completed the the background with the black on the serpent. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you. I'll come back when I start doing the background and the brown. Okay, bye. All right, so I've decided that I'm actually going to acrylic paint uh, the border and the serpent itself. But here is what it looks like. Uh, backgrounded with a dye and now I'm going to go in with the brown and I'm going to just darken up the whole background right here and fill it in and then I will be back when that is done see you then all right, so we finished um, putting the brown dye on it. I'm gonna wait for it to dry completely before the next step. Um, here's what it looks like right now. It's pretty blotchy, and that's just how dyes usually work. Uh, I'm not gonna keep on making it darker and darker and darker because I'm going to, after I paint it, put a layer of antiquing gel on the entire thing and what the antiquing gel does is basically it gets in every seam every line that you've already created and darkens the whole piece up just by a tiny bit it's gonna make everything pop and you can see I don't know if you could see but some places like especially in these border edges the dye didn't actually go all the way down so you can see like a little line. I'm not sure if you can, but I can. Um, but the antiquing gel is going to fix all that. But I need this completely dry to do that. Um, another step that you could also take to kind of make the whole piece more uniform when you're dyeing it is wetting it first so that the piece can actually absorb the dye more evenly, you know. Anyway, so I will come back after this is um, ready for the next step, which is painting. I'm going to put some more thought into what color I actually want to do that to. Anyway, bye. Alright, so we're back. Um, I have re-decided 
that I'm not going to acrylic paint. Um, I'm only going to be using the antiquing gel. Um, usually with antiquing gel, especially for painting it, uh, you would want to put a resist on it. There goes a train. You would want to put a resist on it, maybe like resolin or just a finish, so that the antiquing gel doesn't uh, darken things too bad. Especially if you have like a color that you want popped, you don't want that. You just want the antiquing gel basically to be in the in the seams or in the on the edges, on the beveled edges. But for this piece right now. I think it would look good if I use this with the bear leather because it's going to make the bear leather kind of um, <clears throat> pop too. It's going to darken everything. So I think what I want to do is put some wax paper down so I don't make a mess. I usually make a mess with this kind of stuff. I'm gonna turn this a little bit. Maybe back out. There we go. Basically for the antiquing gel you just want to put some of it on the paper towel. Um, I'm gonna go get some gloves too. I just don't want it on my hands. I've had this stuff on my hands before. And you know, leather is just skin, and we are made of skin, so it also dyes you. Which I don't want. I mean, if you want that, go go ahead. That is the best way for pigment, pigment augmentation. Is... <laughs> Leather antiquing gel. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take it. And then we're just going to rub it in using kind of a circular motion. Just to get it all in the seams and whatnot. Trying to get the the outside edges too, just to keep it more uniform, and just like that. Then you could throw this away. And we'll take a clean, a clean paper towel, and then wipe them all off. Just wipe it off. Just like that. Now, after this step, you could also paint it once the antiquing gel dries. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to. I kind of like it like that. That looks pretty, pretty cool. I do say so myself. Oh no, this is just... Take it off. Put it down. Get rid of your wax paper. And put your antiquing gel back. And see how it kind of goes right into the edges? That's all gonna dry and then darken. That looks pretty good. Alright, 
I will be back after that is completely dry and show you the results. Alright, so I've recorded this bit, uh, probably around four times, and each time my camera shut off, so there's a couple of steps that I wanted to show you, but I've already done, and it just did not record. So, one of those steps would be, here's the piece all dried up, looks pretty good. Um, so one of the steps that I wanted to show you was burnishing the edges. I'm not going to do it right now because I've already done it. But what you would want to do is take the beeswax, draw it across that edge, and then take your burnishing tool. I'm using the second smallest one. And then just rounding those edges out. It produces a glossy, pretty glassy gloss um, edge, you know, just like that. Trying to get the light to shine on it. Shing. Anyway, so that was that part that you missed. Another part that you miss is me putting a finish on it. Luckily, I wanted to put a second coat. So, I'm going to do that now. The finish I'm using is EcoFlow Satin Sheen, not sponsored. Um, leather finish. Acabado para cuero. If you were wondering... Anyway, so you want to shake this up? Open the bottle, as shown. Um, forget where you put the the brush you were using. I think it's that one. And just dip it in there. And you want to put the finish on the leather. Carefully and without prejudice. As shown by me. Beautiful. And then you wait for that to dry. Another thing that I didn't show you was after I put the antiquing gel and let that dry, I went ahead and blackened, just put a whole bunch of black dye on the back, just so it's not that um, leather. Color. There was also a stamp on the other side, like a brand mark, that I didn't want to be seen. I don't know if you can still see it. Somewhere over here. Yeah, you can kind of still see it. Anyway. So, we'll let that dry. That's basically the last part. Um, then, all I would have to do is start shaping, shape, shaping this dowel into the actual pin that goes in it. Now I'm going to put a dye, a stain on that, a wood stain on that. And it should be perfect and complete and amazing and out of this world, if you will. I was also thinking about putting some of this rub and buff, which is just basically like a metallic wax on the raised pieces, maybe the border only. I want to see how that looks first. So that it could shine, you know, and look kind of metal. I do like that though, so we'll see if I decide to do that. Anyway, that's the last bit. I will show you when it's done.